Hi, I'm Doug here at Global West, and today I'd like to talk to you about subframe connectors. What I have on the table happens to be for a 1970 through 73 Camaro or Firebird. Our particular part number is part number 901. Now the subframe connectors all come with body mounts. Now these happen to be our interlocks where it's going to lock into the frame. Of course you get hardware and you get a couple of plates. Now today we happen to have a Firebird out back that we're going to show you how to install these. And there's a lot of tricks that we're going to show you to get these tucked up tight along the floor. Now if you'll notice these are also a round tube. We use round tube because round tube is for torsional rigidity. That's the reason why you're putting a subframe connector on anyway. And you really don't see a square roll cage. They're always round tube. It's for torsional strength. And that's why we do that. Now in this particular unit, the front's going to bolt onto your existing subframe and the back is going to weld. Now we tie way back into where the unibody goes square rail over your differential. That's the strongest portion in the back of the car. We want to tie into that and we don't want it bolted in back there because we're stronger going to the rail, not like a spring mount. Okay, So these particular subframes are built out of roll cage tubing, inch and 5 eighths, 1020 DOM, 125 wall. You could jack your car up on these subframes once they're installed. Anyway, let's go to the back. Let's show you how we're going to install these and give you some pointers on putting 901s on 1970 through 73 Camaro and Firebirds. All right, so now we're going to install the subframe connectors. The first thing we're going to do though is we're going to put the body mount bushing in on the very back, and that's right here. Now, you see here that we've already installed a body mount bushing, but this happens to be for a standard height without our subframe connector. When you put our subframe connector on, this is the new body mount that comes with the subframe connector, and it's going to be used in this location. So the first thing we're going to do is change this and put this mount, the shorter mount you see here, up into this location, because the subframe is going to slide underneath it. This is going to go on top of it, and it's going to be sandwiched. So let me show you how we're going to do this. Now, this has to be loose on both sides. And then up front here, there's two body mounts up here. They just have to be loose. There's one on each side. Those have to be loose. That's all you have to do. And you can do this, granted the motor and trans is not in here right now, but you could do this with the motor and trans in. It's not a problem. So we're going to go ahead and drop this down. And we're going to slide this out. Now we usually use a little bit of a pry bar. It doesn't take much. You're not damaging the floor or anything, but you see how easy this is moving? And it'll do that even if you have the motor and trans in it. We just drop this up in the top like this. You can see here how that sits in there. Okay, and that's it. The next step is going to be sliding our subframe connector up into position. And that's going to go between here, the body mount sits on top. So body mount against the, the body, subframe connector, factory subframe, mount comes down, and then we have this piece here, which allows us to tighten the entire unit up. This captures the body mount so it does not slip around. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, the subframe, there's a right and a left, and these are going to be stamped. This one here is going to be an L, okay? So this is going to go on the driver's side, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to slip this up in here. This is going to raise up because we got to get the, the body mount in between. See the body mount on the top up here? This is sandwiched now in between, okay? That's what we want. And we're going to take our bottom and we're going to get it started okay just like that okay we got the front on there and now we're at the back and what we want to do is we want to mark the frame basically where the subframe connector is going to be in this area all right because we have to buff the frame there's going to be welding this gets welded the front gets bolted so we had to clean the frame here, get the paint off, what have you, so we can get a decent weld. Now if you notice these lines here, we've already taken the, the clips off here. 
and we've got the lines loose, so we're gonna pop this out of the way. Probably use a two by four to hold it out like so. We're gonna buff all this and get it ready for the welding. All right, now that the buffing's all done, I'm gonna drop this back out of the way because I have to put the subframe back up into position. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually tighten these bolts up and pull this up tight so the subframe will stay. So as you can see, all I did was run them down just to hold the subframe up. And one of the things we're gonna do, one of the tricks in installing the subframe is you wanna get the tube as close to the frame rail as possible, up as tight as you can. Now the way to achieve that is the further you slide the subframe back, the tighter this gets. So what we wanna do is we wanna get it as tight as possible. I like to see this so it's like within an eighth of an inch or so. Eighth to a quarter's tops right in through there. It needs to slide back just a little bit to get that straight. So that's what we're gonna do. So as we slide it back, you see how much tighter this gets? And that's what we're looking for. So it looks straight and super tight, okay? So you just adjust the subframe backwards until you get where it's, where it's as tight as possible, like I said, and, and it'll actually line right up see so now we know where that needs to be so once we get that in place and tighten this down a little bit more in the top in the front here now we're going to get our welder we're going to push this up and we're going to tack weld it and get it positioned okay so we're tack welding this in and right after that we're going to go ahead and weld this whole entire side Final step then on the when you're underneath here is you're gonna put the plate. There's two plates that come in the kit and they what they are are caps. You're gonna mark the back of the subframe, you're gonna trim that off. Once you get it trimmed off, you're gonna go ahead and cap the back of the subframe and buzz it in. Okay, so we got the welding done in the back. We still have to do the outside, and we're gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna end up having to take the tires off. But now what we wanna do is we just need to torque this down because we're going to drill a couple holes here and run some half inch bolts to lock this in position. So we're going to torque this to 120. And right in this area here, we're going to go ahead and mark it and we're going to drill a half inch hole and put a bolt here and one here. So we're going to measure basically from the edge of the subframe over approximately about an inch. A little mark there. And then from the top down, about an inch and a half. So that's gonna mark that right there. Now we got our mark. Same thing on the other side. We're gonna go ahead and drill this. We're gonna drill a half inch hole through the subframe and the regular frame. Okay, so once we get it opened up to a half inch, we're just gonna bolt it down. And you use the same measurement on the other side, over here, and we've already gone ahead and drilled that. So now it's just a matter of bolting everything up. All you're gonna do is tighten these down. If you wanna torque them, it'll be 70 foot pounds. Okay, we've got the front end bolted on. Next thing we have to do is weld the outside of the frame in the rear. But once we get that done and you do the same installation on the other side, use a little black paint, touch it up where you welded, and you're done.
Okay, there you have it. How to install 901s on 1970 through 73 Camaros and Firebirds. Really, it's quite an easy installation. Some of those tips we gave you, that's how you get it up tight. Make sure you do that. By all means, if you have any questions, give us a call. And so you know, the 67 through 69, which is part number 900, they install the same way. And the 1974 through 81, which is part number 902, they install the same way, same concept. So if you have those subframes from us, that procedure that we use about knocking it back and getting everything to tuck up tight is the same for all those applications. So there you have it. Part number 901, that's how you put it on.